an abscess where the appendix had been. My. And she had never had the appendix removed, but he told her that it must have ruptured. She said, well, I can tell you exactly when it was. It was 12 years ago. <laughs> but she, she said that it took her the long, for about a month, it took her the longest to get around to do her work. My. If she'd been a city person, she'd have been dead. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. yeah, well, there was something else I didn't know. Um, Had it just out of this world, I'm telling you. But I remember Dr. Man, did you ever know Dr. Graff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was a cusser. Uh, Dr. Graff. Well, I didn't know that. Didn't he was up far on that hill. They had one of them dogwood trees, was you know. Yeah. Pretty dogwood. Yeah. I reckon they cut them down or something. Well, yeah, they'd have to build them. I had a riser in my ear, and I went to Dr. Graff back when he was up there. And then there was, later on, after I, my man and his children, and Jerry, uh, and I was a working, and I went home, Jerry was, but Dr. Trotter was my doctor back then. And the old doctor I went to was Dr. Trotter. And uh, they had an old Dr. Pay. I don't know if yeah, you I remember him. He came during the war. Yeah, old Dr. Still Pay. Him. And he was a brave, outspoken guy. I never did like him much, but uh, Jerry was sick, and I had to take him to the doctor, and I did worked all day. I went flying in there because I just knew the doctors all be closed and gone, you know. Yeah. And uh, I seen old Dr. Pay in there feeding his fish and I was running out. They go, well, I'll get to talk to him and I'm going to. And uh, he said, I'm close. Uh, I said, you are? And he said, yes, I'm close. But I'm close. I said, I'll, I'll get off too. I said, I have to, this boy is sick and I have to bring him He said, what do you think's wrong with him? I said, I don't know. Could be wormy. He said, what makes you like that? <laughs> you know, this old hateful like him. Mm. Finally, he, he took him in there and he gave me some medicine for him. You know, but I, I, didn't, I just never did like him much, uh, you know. I didn't know him uh, really personally. I know I did some work for him. Now, being, the sick man couldn't live better than him one time put a heater in for old Dr. Pay, and old Kendall was one of these guys who went with a cigarette smoking all the time, you know. And he's smoking in old Doc's office then when he put this heater in. Old Doc went, oh. He said, take that thing out there and lay it on a stump. He said, nothing won't bother <laughs> So old Kendall, it just hateful like that. Oh, I'm fine. It's in no, the kitchen they, right on, on the counter. I saw it there, but I don't care very much. Did you, you knew Dr. Dixon, of course. Oh, yeah. Well, he and my dad had offices across the street from his Yeah. And Daddy called to him one evening at dusk when they were closing up. He said, what kind of a day have you had? Dr. Dixon said, I've had a fine day. I've been on the go since sunup, and I've collected a hen, a hound dog, and a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> he, was a, he was up to, wasn't he? Yeah. Dr. Dixon. Yeah. He's a brother of Weber. Shop down there. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, I knew old Doc Dixon. Uh, he, he was a fine doctor. He was. He was good. I'll tell you Dr. another good one, too. <laughs> uh, Dr. Samples. Oh, yes. He was. He was a real nice doctor. Real nice. He wore that big rose on his shirt. <laughs> you see, old Sample, he'd have flour on his shirt. He'd do a lot of time. Always had that. Rupert Jackson saw to it that he had that. He, I think he saved Rupert's life or something in that. The outcome. He had to have that road every day. Lewis, tell me, uh, you were talking about Jerry. Where was Jerry born? Born in the playhouse down there. In the playhouse? Flat Rock Playhouse. In that old building. I was living that. there. You were living in the playhouse? Yeah, at that time. Um, and the, the big white house that's there? Yeah, now? yeah. The Lowell's house. I, I am the old original house with the playhouse up there, that big old house there. Yeah, that was, that was built by a lounge way back. The lounge house, early that's right. Mm -hmm. Sure was. That's where Jerry was born. Oh. 
Oh, Jerry was, he went up to the doctor then, it, and this, uh, some girl, this girl was uh, cleaning his teeth, something she wanted to ask him about. Before he was born, he told her I was born. They said, you a native from here? And he said, yeah. He said, I was born in the playhouse. I told she thought, <laughs> she thought, thought he was just joking, you know. <laughs> Had a big laugh about it, sure enough. I found out he was born in the class, sure enough. <laughs> what about the time you went over with uh, uh, Doris over to the Sandberg home? Yeah, yeah, I went with my niece of mine. She lived in Florida and she came up and wanted to go up to Sandberg place. We went up there, we had a good time. And I, I found and learned a lot of people. And, and we got a, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to go <clears throat> down to the old greenhouse that we, mm -hmm. that we lived in there, you know, the greenhouse. Yeah, yeah it's an office. Yeah, of some kind. man. Uh, see, we lived in that. That's where Uncle Ewell lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, this girl, uh, she said that they, they was doing work in that old house and it was under construction and there was not nobody going in there. We went on over to the building over there and the manager of the place there was uh, I forgot what his name was. But anyhow he's uh, I went over to see him and Weber. Uh, yeah Weber. Yeah uh, he said uh, she told him said if somebody here wants to see you he came out and said uh, and I asked him about it, I told him I wanted stayed there for a long time. And he asked then he asked me if I was related to Dickie. Well his daughter or his wife, somebody was teachers over at East High, you know. And he said, Well wait a minute and then he turned around and he said, Yeah, I said, let's go over there. He went over there and he was tickled to death because I said him a lot of things about that place that I was in, you know. He want me to come back up or I never have one. Yet. Well you really ought to go because they're e eager to get all the information they can about that. Place. And uh, he he wanted me to come back and uh, That'll be our next appointment. Yeah. Yeah, you ought to go talk to them. We'll do this. So oh, he uh about Buckland would love to see He um uh, he's talking about that Corral goat corral. I said, well, that ain't a goat corral. I said, that's a sheep corral. It wasn't Connemary, you know. When Captain Smythe right. was there, he, he had, had sheep. Goat. He had sheep. He wasn't allowed. I don't know to go down that <laughs> <laughs> Not that guy, he was. <laughs> he, had go he had sheep, and he, and you get these preachers, they get up and talk, preach about sheep and all. And half of them ain't never even seen a sheep, so <laughs> much less know anything about them. Uh -huh. And you can't drive sheep, and you can't drive people in the church either. Uh -huh. It's the same thing. Yeah. You take a sheep, you try driving him, you ain't going to drive it. You get him scared, if he ever gets over, they'll all for him. He, <laughs> you lead them. Well, those those border collies can keep them in a bunch, <laughs> but they don't necessarily drive them. Well now these sheep up there, um, my job was put them up at night and, and you couldn't drive them in there, you could lead them in there, but you couldn't drive them in there. In that corral they had built to keep them in. Then they had a vat out there too and that's something else. They filled that thing up, they didn't even know there was nothing there. They had a sheep vat there, where they? Every spring, at least once a year, they they dip them sheep in there to kill them. Oh yeah, uh, tips or whatever, uh -huh. you know. And they just run them off in there, and then they just swim out on the yeah. other side. And what you're doing. Boy, I'd be well, uh, aren't you pleased that they're keeping the Sandberg place? Yes, I am. Day? I'm glad it's part. If it wasn't, they, you know what would be there. Yeah, I know what would be there. Me, you did. And, and and they tried. Um, they tried hard to get it. Did you ever meet the Sandbergs? Did I ever? Yeah, I've, I've seen him one or two times. Mm -hmm. But Dickie seen him a lot of times and talked to the old man. 
He used to go down to the school when they yeah. Well, the Well, she was real friendly. She Always was a nice that. person, Miss Sandra. He was quieter, but he, if you treated him like a neighbor, he yeah. was your friend. Yeah. If you treated him like a celebrity, he wouldn't have a thing to do no, with you. Friend. But I worked for him for a little while. Type He's coming now. Oh, for goodness sake, is that right? I've got an article Sunday, tomorrow, talking about it. Well, he was uh, desperate because I, well, I, I could great type. <laughs> I could, I could hunt. He, he was, was always a favorite uh, uh, well, poet of mine before I even knew that he lived up Well, here. I like his prose better than his poetry. Really? Well, this is this.